and welcome to Scare Actor Stories. Today, I have a guest. He's a good friend of mine. We actually worked together for uh, one particular haunt. I'm not going to say the name. <laughs> but uh, he was there my first year working this haunt, and he's been a good friend of mine ever since. Would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Chris Hicks. Nice to meet you all. All right, so Chris, should we tell everyone how we met specifically? We met at, oh, no names. Mm, I'd like to avoid names just in case. I don't know what is going to be said. <laughs> okay. So we met working at a particular haunt in Hollywood. Yes. We're in Los Angeles, California. Yeah. <laughs> um, this particular year I was playing Jason and... I was a camp counselor. Yeah. Yeah. I got to spend most of the night grinding your face off. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> it was good times. So if you don't know where Jason is from, Jason is from the movie Friday the 13th. And there was a particular maze built for Friday the 13th. So there were a bunch of camp counselors who were being killed by a bunch of different Jasons. So there were actually a lot of different Jasons and you were one of them. Yep. And uh, you were one of my favorites, I gotta say. There were two Jasons in particular, and the other one is William, who was also with me in a couple videos on my channel. So if you want to see those, feel free. Um, but today we're talking about you. Yeah. Uh, you were actually grinding the face of my partner for most of it, yeah? Yeah. How was that? It was, uh, <laughs> it was a good it was, it was how, a good How time. did you compare? Let's let's spill the tea. No, no, I, it's fine. I, let's not compare. <laughs> <laughs> no. She's amazing. She's a wonderful person. I like I'm just I'm just joking. So uh, I actually had a partner when I was getting my face ground from this big grindstone. So Jason would slowly turn the stone while pushing the face of the camp counselor into the stone. And I had uh, a mask on that was very gruesome looking because my face was very bloody. Yeah, it looked, looked like yeah. ground beef. Yeah. 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 I was very attractive with that. <laughs> um, but my partner and I, we had the same build, like body build. So we had the same costume. We had the same mask and everything. So the idea was a seamless transition. Um, so that when she was on, I would have my break. And then when I was on, she would have her break so that actors can get breaks. But there's always an actor there at all times. So he was one of the Jasons. And what was your favorite position out of all the positions? Because Jason was everywhere in this maze and they switched around. I was stuck at the grindstone, but Jason was able to move around. So what was your favorite? I'm going to be really honest. All of those positions were just kind of each one had their pro, each one had their con. That's fair. Yeah. That one... That one was probably one of my favorites because it was it was relatively easy. Mm -hmm. So, what'd you like more, stepping forward to try and scare the crowd or holding the person's face into the grindstone? Holding you guys' face into the grindstone because taking that step in that mask was horrifying. Yeah, it was horrifying because you could never really tell where the end of the stage was. Oh. And you know, for guys like me and William, mm -hmm. pretty big dudes. So one step is. That's a it's pretty great, great distance. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> there were a couple of times where if I had taken a half a step further, oh, I was I was falling off. Do you know if anyone did fall off? One person did fall off. I don't remember who he didn't. He didn't fall. He managed to jump down before he actually fell. Oh, good. But okay. he did fall off the stage. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, what were some of your other favorite positions working at, let's talk about this particular haunt. We won't say names, but from this haunt of all the years that you worked at, how many years did you work this haunt? Ooh, this past year would be four. Four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did two, I think, because that was my first year was with you. And then the year after that, you were a I werewolf. was wolf. Yeah. <laughs> I was one of my main scare actor story content was from being that wolf. <laughs> That's how everyone knows me. It's like, oh, it's a mama wolf. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I've been other things, you guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was two years in LA. I did one year, I think, up in San Francisco. So I think I did three years. I'm going to count this last year, even though I technically wasn't scaring because I'm just always a scary person. So four years scare actor. 
<laughs> I'm always training, just to clarify. Um, yeah, so guys, it's on. it's a year-round thing. You have to always be getting mentally prepared for the season to come up. Yeah, it's a lot of working out. You have to work out a lot. Um, or at least be limber. I don't know. It depends on the position and what kind of scare actor are. Like, for me, because I'm tall, I'm skinny, I have to be agile, too. Because that's a lot of my characters. Is like, my intimidation is less about my size and more about my ability, so I have to stay limber. Yeah. But what about you? How do you prepare for a scare season? I just... For most of my characters, is it's based purely off my size. It's... So for me, I can I can go from not doing anything to being ready to go for a season because mm-hmm. literally that is the first thing people see is like, oh, you're big. I'm going to go this way. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what most people see. Um, What most people don't know is I'm incredibly agile. Mm-hmm. So if you take your eyes off me for even a split second, I'm I'm gone. And then you're going to turn back around. And I'm going to be in front of you. That's. That's the best part. When you see somebody my size up and disappear and then reappear in front of you. Oh. Have you been oh. trained to move in the dark? I and have like reappear in other places. I can. I have not been trained for it, but I can. Ah. Yeah. I've been doing I've been doing this for a long time. So what about other haunts? Like how many other haunts have you worked? How many years have you done those? In total, I've been a scare actor for seven years and I've worked at one other haunt. I guess one was in Santa Clarita for those of you guys who can guess where that one is. (laughs) We won't say names, but if you know, you know. If you know, you know. (laughs) So what kind of characters did you work at that one? Believe it or not, one year they actually had me playing a victim. Why? <laughs> that is a question we have still to this day have not solved. I didn't, I wasn't a victim for the whole season. One guy dropped out and they were just like, okay, you're going to take his spot. So kind of like pool where we're like the filler. Or was it your part? No, I, that it was my part to be a victim. I was a security guard who got his face ripped off. Ah, yeah. okay, that's fun. So Brainstone. it comes full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. The universe has a funny way of uh, doing things. Um, And just to explain, in case you guys don't understand why I said why as a victim, uh, there's kind of a hierarchy for scare acting. Would you agree? Like it goes kill... Uh, it's it's not like a an ability based thing necessarily. They they usually base it on body types. Yeah, so don't be insulted if you like. I don't mean like bottom tier hierarchy as a kill to be a bad thing. It's more like uh, the requirement uh, uh, that is demanded of you for these certain things. So like victim, a lot can be demanded from you, but for the most part, you are not the scare. You are more of a maybe a distraction or feeding into a scare that someone else is doing, like the killer. Uh, the next tier up would be in a maze. If you are the killer, killing a victim or just on your own, you are doing the scare. Uh, and then next tier up would be like scare zone, where you are out in the open and you have more freedom, but at the same time, it's more difficult because you, you typically have nowhere to hide. yeah you typically have nowhere to hide so you have to get creative in how to scare people so that's what i mean by hierarchy is more demanding of a scare and then you forgot about chainsaws, chainsaws. and chainsaws are at the top of the yeah, ladder there top, top of the food chain. <laughs> i was i was going based purely <laughs> on like as a character but yeah you're right chainsaws uh have to be specialty trained because they are real chainsaws they just have uh no what, the they have no mm-hmm. blades because of course that's a liability uh but you mm. still do have to be trained because you still don't want to hit anybody with a chainsaw that's scary but they can rev their engine and everything it's it's I kind of want to be trained for chainsaw actually that is my goal for this upcoming season is to be chainsaw trained do we just like, like show up and say, hey, I'd like to be chainsaw now? Yeah, let them know on the, because uh, you know how normally they give you the audition form? Mm-hmm. Straight across the board, chainsaw. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Can you imagine me with a chainsaw? <laughs> <laughs> that That is a terrifying idea. So the reason I ask, <laughs> I know, the reason I ask for two things. One, um, 
There are quite a few female chainsaws, but there are definitely significantly more male chainsaw wielders. Uh, like, there have been more females in more recent years, I, I feel, but, uh, like, people always, people always assume that the female is a male, first off. Like, I know uh, our Diamond. friend, uh, yeah, Diamond I know our friend had Diamond problem. had that problem. Uh, so people don't assume, they, they assume it's more male than female. Uh, but also just me as a person, I may look nice, but I can be intimidating. Oh uh, yeah. Once you, once you put the mask on that personality, <laughs> it, it, it does something. It, it changes you. Yeah. You become, a, you, become you become the character. Horrifying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nah. Yeah. So what have been some of your favorite characters throughout all your years of scaring? I don't know if you guys can see the shirt. But it, is, it is a Jason Voorhees shirt. Literally, that is the only reason why I work at The Haunt in Hollywood. Is because the year that I first auditioned was because they Jason was there. Yeah. So I was just like, okay. It's a classic character. It's a classic yeah. character. I'm doing... It's actually a funny story how I ended up doing that audition. Did I ever tell you about that? No, please tell. So... They, I, I was late to the auditions for this year, but they ended up having another one because they needed taller people. Mm -hmm. They tend to do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, just so you know, scare acting is a great chance for people who are, like, especially in Hollywood, you know, pe they're usually very strict for height requirements for a lot of different theme parks and events that you may work in Hollywood. But with scare acting, they look for the unusual. So if you're a significantly tall person or a significantly short person, they tend to look more for you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, th there's there's stuff for everybody. So. Yep. Sorry, continue. Um, this was this was one, right before I got married. Okay. We were out celebrating our, you know, it was kind of like a bachelor, bachelor party, me and my wife, mm -hmm. a bunch of friends. We ended up getting absolutely drunk. <laughs> and they were talking to me about it because at this point I had actually retired. I had did three years and I was like, okay, that's enough. I'm done. Then they told me that the Han Hollywood was going to have one of my favorite characters. So my fiance at the time pulls up her phone. Boom. I just scheduled you an audition. Mind you, I am, I am absolutely hammered at this point. <laughs> so I was just like, Cool. Great. Yeah, I'm I'm totally going to do that. I had no interest in really doing it. But she forced me. So as a loving I, wife does. Yeah. As, as That's a, awesome. Yeah. How was the audition for it? You want to talk about the audition process and any embarrassing stories that you have for auditioning? Believe it or not, every audition I've I've gone to has been a cakewalk. This one was relatively easy because normally there's two parts for the audition for the Hollywood haunt, the stock and kill and scare the cone. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not going to give too much with that. Well, I just shameless plug. I actually have another YouTube video explaining some of the audition process no. in more detail. And uh, I have a series called like scare acting basics or like scare acting tips and tricks. And we're actually going to make another YouTube video after this one. <laughs> For that, uh, going over how to intimidate when you are you and when you are me. Like, there are different techniques for when you're a male, female, different sizes, etc. So, um, I actually had a request from a fan asking, d DM'd me and asked, like, I'm a big guy, how do I do this? And I said, I'm not a big guy, so let me call someone who is if and you, plays that character well. If you are watching this video, when she does that, I will let you know, because it is surprisingly easy yeah so if you want to see that other video that will be coming up soon too anyway uh <laughs> more audition stuff more audition okay so for that audition because it was it was last minute and they were just they were really just looking for tall guys mm -hmm. scare the chair just one one chair yep. that was it yep scare the chair oh man Line us up. scare the chair now, most, most of you guys are probably wondering, that doesn't sound hard, but when they put you in a room with 30 other people you don't know, yeah, it, it gets a little uh, nerve-wracking. So So they didn't just, like, line you up. They lined you up 
and then the chair is here in front of you? So, or were you in a line and then like, okay, next, okay, next. So let's say you have three judges. There's a chair in front of them. The line starts over here and the room curves. Ah, so, so it is like the one line. Okay. The one line, scare the chair, get to the back of the line. Once everybody goes, all right, well, uh, give us a second. We'll call numbers. That's that's how I got in that first year. Do you remember how many people got in with you? Like, what's the Ooh. ratio? I don't remember how many people got in with me. Uh, Was it a lot or a little? Do you remember at least that? About three-fourths of the group got in. Got in? Mm-hmm. They look for a lot of people for big haunts. So the numbers are in your favor for a lot of it. But it really depends on what they're looking for. Most of the time they're looking for high energy and movement. High energy, movement, don't touch other people, don't touch the cone. <laughs> yeah, that is a thing that they do not want you to do. Don't touch anybody or anything ever. Because that's liability. Even when you don't touch someone, someone might still say, that one touched me. That happened to me quite a few times. That... I was like, no, you grazed the side of my dress, sir. You're getting kicked out. That that happens to me more often than not because I get really, really close with most of my scares. When you've been scaring a long time, you know when to stop with your weapon most of the time. <laughs> uh, if you If you've been scaring... Like, a long time that night, you might get a little tired, so you might want to pull back a little sooner. But, yeah, we could get, like, right in front of your face. Yeah. A lot of people this past season were not comfortable with how close I was. Because you, cause you, when you were with me, I had, what, a machete? Yes. For that one, I tended not to get super close. That was an above-the-head thing. Mind you, I'm already six feet tall. If I raise my arm, that's, like, another two feet. So there's just, like, this giant machete coming out of nowhere. Most people don't like that. They tend to shrink. It's fun. It's great. <laughs> great time. I would... Uh, I'm I'm tall, but I'm not as tall as him, clearly. Uh, I'm 5'9", so I'm not 6 foot. But I'm tall for a girl. At least the girls that were hired. And I was given a fake axe once. And one of my favorite scares to do... I don't know how effective of a scare it was. I just really liked to do this. I had a little hidey hole in a scare zone with a fake axe. And... I could actually move in my costume, so that was fun. Mm. I would start in the hidey hole. I would wait for the next wave of people to come in. I would run out of my hidey hole, pose for them a little bit, get them a little intimidated, sprint, and then jump in the air with my axe, and then just stop, and then wave, and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it intimidated some people back, like, oh my god, what's happening? I'm like, I don't even know. Let's have fun, though. <laughs> hey, that's, that's the name of the game. Have fun, because you're going to be there... All night. All night. All night. Multiple nights in a row. It's been getting more and more. Um, Oof. This this past season, they started us off first weekend, five days. I heard about that. That was not a fun week. Because most of the time, you, have, you start off three days a week. You have time to build up because you know there's going to be at least one five-day week. This year, they were just like, no, we're full throttle, five days right off the bat. I think this year, because normally we only have one five-day week. I think this year we had three. Wow. Yeah, there was one in the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end because they added a day because of the fire. Mm. That also was not a fun night. Why? Yeah, because they lost money. Oh, oh people, that makes sense. A lot of people had it's to all leave about the money. because they it was really hard for them to breathe and... Yeah, that was that was not that Call was your not union. a fun night. <sighs> they wouldn't do anything. You union really couldn't do anything for that one. No. So. Uh, and just to let those who don't scare know, uh, scaring is a lot of energy, mental and physical. And the first week scaring after not scaring for a very long time, because it is a seasonal job, you get very sore doing it the first few nights so if you do like three nights in a row you're sore you just like oh uh, that's why we lose so many people the first couple of weeks because they can't handle it yeah but then you ease into your character you ease into doing it a bit more and you can handle it better however the average you want to be doing it is three nights in a row for like what eight to ten hours that we work 
Uh, four days we can handle, five is really pushing it. And to have multiple weekends where we do five days in a row is really exhausting. So that's why we're like, really? Huh? Five days when it doesn't sound that many, it can feel like a lot when you're scaring. So just, just to let you guys know. Yeah, that, that those five day weeks, they... They just beat it out of you. Plus, you want to sleep for days. Yeah, you don't have that much time to recover either. Because if you're doing five days, that means you have two days to recover at most. It takes a long time to recover, too. So, plane. Pause. With the rain and the plane. Go away. <laughs> We need the rain, though. We do need the rain. I, I'm not complaining about the rain. Oh. I'm complaining about the plane. Oh. But the rain is making noise. Speaking of the rain, were you... You were. You were You were working when that... I was the wolf when that one rain night yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the first ones they called in, actually, because of my big mask. So, mm -hmm. uh... Whoever my supervisor was, I'm not going to reveal names, but my supervisor was like, no, no, she could handle the rain. And I was like, yeah, I'm not slipping and falling and stuff. It's totally fine. Like, I want to scare. But then the people in charge of the masks were like, mm -mm, pull her in. It's going to get mildewy. Let's let's yeah. protect our mask. Yeah. For, so for most of the stuff there is protect our mask, protect our props, protect our costume. And then protect our people, maybe. Yeah. yeah so, you know, sometimes these characters... Hey, they get dinged a little. They're bottom of the priority list, but I've had, I think, two TikTok, maybe just the one. But I had an injury edition for my scare character stories on TikTok. That's how many I've had. I'm Surprising, okay. Surprisingly <laughs> enough, I tend to not get injured as much. Is it because you're so intimidating as a person that they people, just don't mess with you? Or don't bother me. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why I take it upon myself whenever I'm working with an actor who is not my size. I don't think you really had that problem when we were working together. We're guys well, I was on a stage. That is true. Yeah, we were on a stage and we had uh, uh, one of show control right there. And when they actually did their job, that mm. was nice. There was this one guy that would dance and ruin the scare. He was so into. I loved him. Like I loved his personality, and I know he meant well. But it was like very you're, clearly. Don't your your distraction. It's a distraction. It's ruining the scare. Like I don't. Like, from a professional I don't, standpoint. I never want to be that guy. Like this is about us. Please stop. I don't want to be that guy. But I don't either. Like I loved seeing him have fun, but from a professional standpoint, that was messing with the scare. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're out in the open like that and you can't move. Like being on that stage was different than being in a scare zone because it's you're on this stage you can't disappear and pop up over there you're on this stage when people walk by you're still going to be on the stage mm -hmm. so it's, it's a little bit harder in that sense i think one of the biggest tips i could give for scare acting is know your purpose as a scare because I knew right away being grindstone that I was not the scary thing. I'm not meant to scare the person, even though it's fun to be the scarer. I was the distraction. And as long as you know where you, uh, what place you're supposed to be, then you can better serve the maze as a whole. Yeah. But sometimes being the distraction mm -hmm. is more fun than actually being the scarer. Because while you're sitting over here, look at me, look at me. <laughs> they have no idea that somebody else is creeping up behind them or they're not paying attention to this person. And when they get that scared, that sense of fulfillment is... It's like, I help. It's, it's like, it's yeah. so great. It's so great. Plus, I think it's easier to be able to laugh under your mask when you're the distraction because you can turn your head. I laughed so hard oh in that God. mask sometimes. Oh, it was great. Uh, what were some of your best scares that you remember? Huh. Bragging moment. Let's go. Bragging moment. Yeah. So, <laughs> mm, I can't say the May's name. Uh, I'm trying to think of how I can tell this. Okay. My first year, I was put in the pool. Um, and pool is like filler in the maze that he's talking about. Like if, if someone calls out sick or someone's missing a spot for whatever particular reason and we have another actor 
who can fill that spot, that's pool. Yeah. Yep. Um, Just because we, we have our own <laughs> lingo. I need to explain to people who yeah. don't know. Yeah. So my first year, I was put in the pool, and then they made me a zombie for a certain attraction that is no longer ah, open. Ah, okay. Um, they, they, they made me a zombie. They put me next to the burning cabin. I don't know if you know exactly. What, yes, I know yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause that freaked me out when, when I went through. And it, this was so perfect. One zombie. Cause I was in the park area. I was just kind of out in the open inside. Mm-hmm. So the burning zombie would come out of the cabin and people are just like, Oh wow, that's cool. Then I would come from this way. I would mow over just groups of people <laughs> at a time. Like, it was so bad at one point. This girl ran past me, but ran into her friend, and they both just fell over. It was great. I don't, most of you guys don't know this. We call that bowling. I, people, I didn't even know bowling. that term. Really? Bowling? I never we, did that. We call it people bowling. That makes so much sense because yeah. I've done it. I've done it so many times. That makes yeah. so much it's, sense. There's a term. I learned something new today, you guys. Yeah. It is, <laughs> it is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> You drop one person, that's cool. You drop an entire group, oh, that is. I call that dominoes. There but is. I think I think it depends on like the effect. Like if they all just go down down at once, I could see that being bowling. But if it's like an effect where they just boom, 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 one takes out the other. Yeah, then that's the domino. Okay, yeah. I learned something new. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I have I have stories like that for days where we just we just flatten groups of people. Um. Another time, the first time I played Jason, Freddy vs. Jason, mm. that was a great maze. The energy was unlike anything I've experienced mm. at either haunt. Um, me and my friend Hunter. I know Hunter. Do you? I think so. Actually, he's a mutual friend of me and my boy band. Kind of, kind of tall, skinny. Yeah. Yeah. He was in Anchorman as a child. I don't know if this is the same hunter. Does he live in Texas now? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, probably not. See, this is a problem. Hunter is a really, really common name. (laughs) Is it? I didn't know that. It is really common. I was like, I just assumed it was not a popular name. So I'm like, oh yeah, I know Hunter. It's like (laughs) mutual scare actor with a name that I thought was uncommon. Must be the same person. (laughs) It happens. Um, Guaranteed he's not watching this because I don't know him that well. Uh, <laughs> you'd, you'd be surprised. He's he's all over the place. Hi, Hunter, if you're watching this. Sorry, it's not you in this story, potentially. I don't know yet. It's yet to be determined. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> me and him, greatest kid. Like, we have pretty good chemistry when we're on stage. But mm. me and him, oh, that was, we would bounce people off of each other all night long <laughs> and it was it was like terrifying painful. it was it was great in this particular story we were pinballing people for some reason we ended up coming out at the same time and these two girls just stopped and i reached i reached out for this one girl because when you don't don't ever stop moving because then we're just going to mess with you yeah <laughs> this one girl she stopped and I reached out for her and you could literally see her just melt she just dropped to the floor I had to go back into my hive for like a good two minutes because I could not I I, I died so hard in that moment it was great it was great <laughs> you guys if you're thinking about becoming a scare actor do it it is the greatest drug ever that's that's why I like say it's, 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 rush, a, the, it's the adrenaline scares. it's adrenaline you get addicted to it mm-hmm. real quick. Real quick. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, what else? I, I I just have a I have a bunch of stories. Did you you played Cupid this last year? I did. Scary Cupid. Scary Cupid. That mask was terrifying. Did you ever get to see a, a picture of it? Yes. Yes. That's I, right. I went you through. went through. And I had a pass. I went through. I made a vlog about my experience going through it. Yeah, I, re- and I, I remember you. I, I think I pointed to the Cupid playing saying, I think it's my friend. Like, I don't know. 
It, mm, no, no, because when I you went tell. through, I, I didn't see you. Then yeah, again, you told me that I, later. I was like, oh, because he pointed it, at me as if he knew me. Then, then again, I don't, I don't see much of anything when I'm scaring. Yeah, yeah. in the zone slash the mask. No, I don't. I don't scare with contacts. Oh, yeah, I don't. I don't use contacts, and as you guys can all see, I do wear glasses. So I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Even as Jason? Even as Jason. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Learn something new. And I'm still that good and I can't see. Imagine if I could see though. That would just be great. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I imagine you would laugh even harder just oh, seeing my people's God. faces. That would, that would... In crisp, clear terror. I don't know. Maybe oh, maybe this God. next year. Wear contacts for just like the first hour. I know. I think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably try doing that. But it, it kind of, I think that's one of the things that kind of helped me mm-hmm. over the years be as good as I am because I have to watch shadows from different angles because this last year, yes, oh no, this is my second year in a maze at this haunt. So it was easier to watch people, but you know, being at tram, mm. you have to watch so many people coming from so many different angles yeah. and to it, it gets to a point where it's like, you can you can feel where people are, so I, you know maybe going without the glasses is what's been helping me all these years. I could see that. I could see that being very helpful because one of the things I keep saying is, uh, the more you scare, the more aware you will be of your surroundings. Like yeah. you could just sense when people are around. When I was the wolf last year. I had no peripheral, upper, or lower vision, so I was very limited. Plus, to have the wolf look at people, I had to look down. So I was just watching for feet the whole time. So I had to just, like, feel. And then I had to feel when people were behind me. And most of the time, they were. So I would do a very tight turn whenever I had to turn around. Most of the time, there was someone trailing me very close. Very close. It was not okay. (laughs) Yeah, so for those of you guys watching, again, if you go to the haunts, please give the scare actors space because, especially if they have a prop, because mm. they will turn around, they will not know you're there, and you will get whacked. And We're very limited with our costumes and masks. Yeah. Like, especially if they're wearing a mask. It is always limiting to our vision. Yeah, especially this one in Hollywood, because that's all they use is latex mask. <sighs> is it latex or silicone? It, I think it depends. It depends on the character. I think I might have had silicone as the grindstone. Um, there are different masks that we wear. If you guys are interested in a video on how to wear them, I can bring one of my special effects makeup friends on who did work this event with us. And she can potentially explain it. I cannot give guarantee because I've not asked her yet because I don't know if this is going to be a thing. <laughs> this just popped up in my mind right now. So that interests you let me know i've not been engaging in the chat at all <laughs> sorry you guys i, I can't I, read this far it's yeah. a super small text uh but yeah I, I know for sure someone asked like what is your favorite cosplay that i've done <laughs> and that's putting you on the spot real quick <laughs> you don't even I, need to answer that but I, someone did ask that I feel like this is a cop out because I know this is your favorite character, but huh. you're highly you're highly Quinn cosplay. That, that has been thank you been on point. Thank well, that one also took the longest, so I'm happy to hear that. Thank you, bragging moment. But someone did ask that, so I might as well honor what they said in the last chat. Uh, let's see, what was another thing? Did you say what your some of your favorite costumes were? I know we touched base on it, but was there more you wanted to add to that? My favorite costumes. Let's see. Let's say favorite character to scare as, and then favorite costume to wear. Like, what was the most like freeing one that you could actually move in? <sighs> <laughs> so, favorite character, obviously Jason Voorhees. Great, great character. Um, my favorite costume to move in would be a character I played at the haunt in Santa Clarita. Okay. It was I was I was a, I was a pigman. I was a human nice. human experiment pigman late to the, the mask sucked. Costume was great. The costume green scrubs. 
Nice. That's, That's comfortable. That's it. Green nice. scrubs, super comfortable, super easy to move in. Again, the mask sucked because it had horns. So there was this one particular rail we would have to walk by. And every time we would do it, it would snag the horn. So we'd just be walking in and then just do this. It, it, oh, no. It sucked so hard. But it was a fun character. <laughs> were you allowed to talk in yes. that hunt? Okay. Because we we're allowed. not allowed to talk in the hunt where we met. I think that's another thing that makes that hunt more fun. It, it's it's a challenge. You don't get to use your voice, so you have to use your body mm-hmm. and your gestures. And you have to get your point across to people without actually being able to speak. That tool, as a scare actor, is is, is it's cheap. I realize that. Mm. Being able to speak is cheap. Especially if you're playing such an intimidating character. For me, I'm grateful in a way that I wasn't allowed to speak as the wolf because my voice would not do wolf justice just as it's on its own <laughs> yeah you have like a... roar that's not scary yeah, you don't you don't have a very intimidating voice I don't but she is, I can she is one of the best scare actors I know you guys Stop it. shucks I work hard <laughs> Um, it's funny because so many people are like, I don't see you being scary. And that's the point. (laughs) False sense of security. (laughs) Oh man. I know some people who are, uh, not even five feet tall and they, they get to move in with their characters and it's just like, oh, you guys are... <laughs> um yeah i know people who are not even five feet tall they get to move in they're they're just they're scary they're scary because we had uh the trick-or-treat maze last year not I, this past year but the one before i am upset because i went through that maze expecting to see sam apparently i went through in the black where they were switching there was no. one sam on set i was i was upset Oh, no, because the Sams were really good. They were very creepy. Because yeah. they're so small and you don't expect it. I got I got to talk to some of the people who played Sam afterwards, and they were just like, yeah, I, that character was great. They said that costume was really comfortable because it was just It was a onesie. onesie. Yeah. It was a onesie. That I, I, I will say my costume was comfortable except for the gloves and the mask. The gloves would have been fine if this the one on my right hand didn't push my pinky out like that because that caused strain right here. Mm. And uh, they cut a slit for it to kind of bend better, but it was such a hard plastic that I couldn't like bend my glove. And obviously I couldn't see in my mask and it chafed my nose. So I actually bled a lot wearing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the costume itself was just like, spandex with some fur and a a dress with boots that were weirdly comfortable that they kept losing. Uh, Yeah. I give a lot of respect to costumes though. They They, have a lot to go through. They have a lot. They have a lot of costumes they have to watch, maintain, keep track of. So normally I wouldn't get mad at them when they would, cause I had a similar problem. I I only got upset when they threw away my insoles. Hmm. Because that was ex- those were my own insoles, and you you should have yeah. insoles in your shoes every time you scare. Honestly, if you guys can, try to wear your own shoes. I always if try to wear your own you, yeah. shoes. Like for me, every time I play Jason or the Scarecrow. Oh yeah. I always wear my own shoes. Even even this past year, because they tried to get me to wear these sandals, mm-hmm. and I was just like, the first couple of sets, okay, they were comfortable. After a while, if you can't stand, you can't scare. I switched my shoes without telling anybody because you couldn't see my feet anyway. Yeah. What's the point yeah, if you can't so see the feet? I switched my shoes and I was good to, I was good to go. But that that whole, you have to wear these. Wear I, I preferred the boots that they were supposed to give me actually for the wolf character because 
they were way more comfortable than the heavy duty boots that they replaced the boots with. Like they just couldn't find shoes for me for some reason, or they were on back order or something like that. Like there was always an excuse. I didn't have the shoes I needed for the first two weeks of scaring. So they gave me these ugly black heavy duty men's shoes that were so heavy to move in. And it was great ankle support, but that was that was it. It was so awful to move in and so ugly and didn't fit the character. Like, uh, but once I got the boots, they were way more comfortable to move in. So for me, I, I tend to wear combat boots. Yeah. Yeah. You like, do. Uh, like all of my boots, like every year I end up wearing the same combat boots. I think William does too. Cause they look comfortable to move in. They are comfortable to a certain extent. Like, you know, yeah. great ankle support. You got a little bit of cushion so you can, you can go longer. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he wore combat boots every year except for when he was playing the clown. Mm -hmm. I think they had to wear those ugly red plastic boots. I think I know what you're talking about. I think I've seen pictures. Because I wasn't there any time he was a clown. I I only had him as Jason. And then when I was the wolf, I think he was the clown, but I never really saw him. No, because he ended up playing a clown like two years back to back. I think he was yeah. a military clown. Yeah. One year. You, he he you? was like the general. It was. Oh, no, that you weren't. No, you were in. You were the wolf that year. He was a clown. Yeah, I remember that. But I never actually like saw him. I did. Yeah. I saw him you all the time. You lucky duck. <laughs> I saw him all the time. You we, lucky duck. Same, same place. It was fun when they made me that same clown. Yeah? Yeah. We had fun. (laughs) Do tell. (laughs) You have two really big guys who are really good at moving without people knowing where they are. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, my God. That was the greatest time ever. (laughs) That was was by far. Did you do the, the, the ping pong whatever? It wasn't, bouncing someone from one scare actor to the next because they're just so scared it wasn't, of each other. It wasn't really so much as a ping pong. It was more of like, hey, this person right here, scare them. We would do this all night. <laughs> we would literally pick people out of a crowd because some of the people who come through, as you know, they like to be those those tough guys like, oh, you can't scare me. But we're gonna. We're, we're, we're gonna get you. Like... You can either have fun with it or you can make us be the bad guy and actually work for it. Mm-hmm. Either way, we're going to get what we want. <laughs> so he would he would find, either one of us will find people who are just like, oh, we're not, you're not scary to us. Mm-hmm. I would look up, for some reason, we would always know when to look at each other. I would look up <laughs> and he would see me and then the person would be focused on me. they turn around and William is right there of course he is <laughs> it was it was great so many fond memories i don't think we got to work together this last year no i think he was in corpses yeah yeah he was in thousand corpses i remember yeah. he told me and i saw him once and i intended to see him again but i think i just got that switch i went through and i was I was more amused by the set than I was by the scare actors. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, then that's that. I hardly remember it because I was just so focused on finding him specifically that as soon as I found him, and he was the first scare, so I would like, is it is it is it you? It's you, great. Because we have like, if I know a character is working a maze and I'm going through it as a guest, we usually have. A gesture that the character would do for me because I can't I, I can't know who it is in the mask yeah. so they have to let me know like I am that person you think I am so he would take his fake axe and just like go to the neck and that was the sign that it was him See, and he I, did that and then after that I was like I found my friend just going through the rest of the maze <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't even remember it to be honest yeah it was it was it was an okay maze I don't know if any of you guys who were in that maze are watching. It was an okay maze. Obviously, I think my maze was better, but <laughs> that's just that. I liked Killer Clowns the best, to be honest. Sorry, everybody who didn't wear Killer Clowns, but the ones who did, 
You guys were great. I actually had fun going through Killer Clowns. Um, I walked through. I think I don't remember which water gun it was, but whoever was on the trigger for that one had perfect timing, and I'm a little upset about it because I turned the corner, and as soon as I turned the corner and looked into the room, I got shot in the face with a water gun. <laughs> I immediately turned around and walked out. I was just like, I need, I need a moment. Because that was just... just mm. <laughs> so Glenn actually worked on that maze uh, briefly. Uh, and I'm not being biased when I said it was my favorite maze. I actually liked that maze when I went through. I went through the haunt alone my first time. And then Glenn and I went through together another night. And then for a couple nights, he worked it, uh, lighting. And I had a pass, so I would visit him at work and obviously the other character friends of mine and just go through alone because I'm a strong, independent woman. I can do stuff alone. So I would visit him and we would go through together on one of his checks. Like he would have to go through the maze every once in a while, make sure all the lights are working and the cues are working and stuff. And he, there's a, a, a symbol, there's a gesture he would do to make sure, because we are not allowed to scare staff unless they tell us to. And because he his job was to check to make sure the lights are working on the cues, he, he would go like, like push the button, push the button for the light to come on. He would do that behind me. <laughs> and when I go through mazes, I allow myself to be scared. And I am a scaredy cat going through mazes. So when he did that, I was like bouncing around like, oh my God, ah, everything is hitting me. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and he was just, he was like, hello. See, I, that's why I'm jealous of that ability to go through mazes and be scared. I have completely lost that. I will turn off all my reflexes, everything, and just, just try to take it in. But it just doesn't happen. That's, well, I had to train myself because the first few times I tried that, when you're a scarer, you're most of the time, because I know many people who are just scaredy cats as scarers too, so they'll get jumped at the little stuff in in costume, in character. Uh, when you're a scarer, usually you get desensitized to scares because you work it and, you know, the magic's gone and everything like that. So uh, I had to train myself to go through mazes as a guest and I was just like acting scared. But after a while, it did trigger actually being scared. So when you pretend enough, and even if I'm not scared, I'll still scream because it it's good morale for the scare actors. We feed off of screams. <laughs> Speaking of people who are hard to scare, you you know Joe, right? Penguin, Penguin Joe? Yeah, he's actually another mutual friend of me and Glenn. Funny enough, he went huh. to college with Glenn. Interesting. Yeah, we like both saw him on one of our first dates to Universal. Like we had just become officially boyfriend girlfriend. We went to Universal for the day, and we see Joe, and we both at the same time were like, "Joe, wait, you know Joe?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> Joe yeah, is Joe is one of the greatest oh, greatest people I know. Such he's... a sweet guy. But anyway, what um, about Joe? <laughs> I actually managed to scare him. Really? Like, it wasn't a big ah scare. I just got him to jump. Most of you guys don't know. That's a people, more honest reaction, though. People like Joe, you don't scare. No matter what you try, you don't scare. The fact that I even got even a little bit of a reaction out of him. That's, that that's made a my night. win. That is a win. That's why whenever I walk through, I will find people. If they can scare me, I will find them and sing their praises and find out who it is. Mm -hmm, they deserve mm -hmm. recognition. If you can scare a fellow scare actor, especially somebody who's been doing it as long as I have, that that props. Yep. It's really tough to scare me unless I allow myself to be scared, but I it has been done. Um, a lot of the times my friends will try and sneak up behind me and like go, ah, and I'll just turn around and go, hey. <laughs> What's up? I think I was able to scare you once. Probably. It's 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 tough, but it's not impossible. Yeah. And a couple people have. Glenn was so happy when he actually managed to scare me fairly recently. Like, I was so in the zone of, like, shopping or whatever I was doing. And he just showed up behind me. He's like, ah. And I'm like, oh, my God. I, like, threw the shirt I was looking at and everything. And he's like, <laughs> yes, I did it. Yay. I finally got you. That is like, that's like me with my wife. Yeah. She actually walked through uh, my maze this last year. And I mean, the scare I pulled on her was 
absolutely perfect. If it had been anybody else, they would have hit the floor. Her, really? <laughs> her, because she knows how I was scared, she was like, oh, there he is. And then she kept walking. I was just like, wow. Wow. Yeah, when you know someone that well, you know their their body builds, you know how they move, you know the scare, and you're like, yeah, it's you. I know you. That was the only time she walked through, though. Aw. She didn't, she didn't try to what attempt it twice. Aw. What a shame. No. What What is your biggest pet peeve of a guest going through? Do not look at your cell phone. Thank Don't you. look at your cell phone. <laughs> Do not turn on your flash. That is the quickest way to just ruin the experience, not only for you, but for everybody behind you. Because if you shine a light in my eyes when I'm in a dark room, I'm going to look down. And until your group passes, I'm not doing anything else. And you're you're gonna ruin the experience, and I'm not gonna get in trouble. So, just do yourself a favor, <laughs> go through, enjoy the moment, have a good story to tell. Yeah, be scared. Allow yourself to be scared. Yeah, it's so funny that you mentioned that though, because as I was asking the question, I wasn't expecting you to say anything having to do with the cell phone for some reason. But in my head, I immediately thought like, get off the phone. That is the biggest yeah. pet peeve. Like, I can't tell you how many times this last season I walked through and this kid was playing a game on his phone as he was walking through the maze. I was Chill just construction. like, construction. Sorry, like I was just oh. Uh, you're fine. I'm just like, yeah. I'm acknowledging for other people that, yes, I do hear the construction. No, I'm not going to edit it out later. Fun. Anyway, continue. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. He, was, he was playing a game on his phone and I just, I stopped what I was doing and I was just like, if I could knock the phone out of your hand right now. That is so nah, frustrating. It is. It's the most annoying thing in the world. It's like going to a movie and being on your phone the entire time. It is yeah. literally the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Not only not only is it taking away from your experience from the show, but the light from your phone is giving away the high that we're supposed to be in. So, again, you're ruining it for everybody else. Just put the phone away. Enjoy the moment. You're Maybe there just... to be scared. Why are you on your phone? Like, if it's an emergency, I understand. But also... Who's on the phone like nyan, 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 when it's an emergency? You're usually like, hello, on the phone. Yeah. And take it to the side. There were so many people when I was the wolf and I was working my scare zone. There was one woman in particular. Uh, no, she was more of a girl. Uh, <laughs> she does not be called woman because I'm pissed at her. So she was on her phone just like texting whatever she was doing. And usually when someone's on their phone is potentially a good scare to be had there because if you put your hand or in my case case <laughs> claw in their line of vision between their face and their phone they get scared because they have no idea scared. that you were there and i swear i was following this woman peripheral vision was a thing like if she had access to her peripheral vision she would see i'd be there because i was that close to her just walking by the side the whole length of my scare zone which was a quite a distance and she had no idea I was there so toward the end of the scare zone I put my claw in between her eyes and her phone hoping that would get a scare because I just wasted so much time stalking this woman and she just goes could you not I'm on my phone the wow. audacity wow that, that would have just been like oh if you come back through my scare zone if like, I could flip you off right now. And I did. <laughs> I tried. I was just like, oh, this is the best I can do in my claws that can't move. <laughs> See, I do something similar to that. Again, most of you guys know, for any of the haunts, we're not allowed to touch you. But there are certain loopholes. If I am standing in your path and you just so happen to walk into me, guess what? I didn't touch you. You ran into me. <laughs> <laughs> I and I use, that, I use that trick a lot. I use that a lot. Because it is one of the, oh, sorry, I didn't, oh my God, you're a monster. <laughs> and what? Yep. Just the keep looking up until you meet your gaze. <laughs> uh, have you made anyone pee their pants before? I have not. What? That's part of the character bucket list. You I know, and I have, I have not had that yet. 
Oh, no. Like, I've been in a maze where it's happened before, but mm. I have not had that. Have you made someone spill their beer? Yes. Good. This last year, I actually had somebody throw their beer at me, and I was just like... Well, that's no fun. Get, what, what? Literally, in my mind, I was just like, what are you doing right now with your life? First off, <laughs> first off, beers at theme parks, not cheap at all. It's like $16 for, what, eight ounces? Yep. <laughs> so so it's... that's why we try and make you spill your beer because first off we don't like you being drunk secondly it's more fun for us to make to your watch... wallet hurt yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that, I, was, I was just like <laughs> in the moment i was just like why why are people like this that's the only thing i was thinking but then after i realized they just spent all that money on that beer that they threw at me i was just like you know what they, they would probably regret that decision like right about now. Immediately. Plus, they'd be like, oh, my beer. Yep. <laughs> I wanted to drink that. I personally wouldn't waste my beer even if I didn't buy it at a theme park. But, I would hey. drink to the last drop yep. if I spent that much money on it. Even if it's a diluted, watered-down beer, I would drink the whole thing. I say you mean Bud Light? I was going to say <laughs> Heineken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flavored water. What? <laughs> We are both over 21. We drink responsibly. <laughs> okay. That's why we could joke like this. But drink responsibly. Anyway. <laughs> I do all my drinking at home. I can be as irresponsible as I want. That's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's I still life. have all of my fingers, so we're good. What about all your toes? I bet though all those are there too. Oh, the... good. Good. Some of them have been broken from... Doing stupid stuff while drinking, but that is a different conversation. That, that's not scare acting related, yeah. so we, a we, we can cover that in another time. live stream if you guys. Want. But um, I gotta say, one of my favorite moments with you that I've actually told people. This is how I describe you to people. I'm like, he's my big bodyguard kind of friend. <laughs> one of my favorite moments was I was gonna be pulled to pool that first year, and uh, we, I forgot who it was. I forgot who was like pulling me to pool, but you were telling them, no, don't take her. I want to act with her. I want, I want her to be here. And I was like, I really don't want to go to this particular maze either. Like it sucks. And they were like, but, uh, you could, you know, work a couple extra hours if you do this. And I'm like, I kind of got to go, Chris, I'm sorry. And you literally like picked me up and took me away saying, nope, not this one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he can just pick me up and carry me off as he chooses. That's my friend Chris. Don't be intimidated. I, I have told this to Glenn to intimidate him, by the way. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he can just pick me up at will. And I'm not a small girl. <laughs> so the fact he could do that is awesome. <laughs> I still have yet to meet Glenn. And I'm, I'm kind of jealous that William has. It was a spur of the moment thing more yeah. than anything. It was just like, we happened to be at Universal. He happened to have been working that day and we ran into him randomly. So I didn't want to meet him. I love William. I didn't want Glenn to meet him at that time because this is not scare acting related. This is just friends talking who happened like to met scare story. acting, the side tangent. But um, I wanted you and William to put up that velvet rope in front of my door and be here, both of you here, because they're my they're my bodyguards. So both Chris and William are my bodyguards. They said if I ever make it as an actress, I'm gonna hire them as my bodyguards because they're big, they're intimidating, but they're so they're so great. I love them both so much, and we get along great. So it would be fun. <laughs> so I would hire you both as my bodyguards. So they were gonna be my bodyguards while meeting my boyfriend for the first time. And you were going to have like a clipboard yeah. and, and have Glenn be very confused knocking on the door and you open the door and be like, name, uh, Glenn, you're not on the list. And have me be like, oh no, he's cool. He's cool. Let him in. And that would be like the first meeting. <laughs> and when I explained that to Glenn, because well, William and I were both a little disappointed that we randomly ran into him. But of, of course I wanted to see him because he's my friend. So we were both a little disappointed that we couldn't do that <laughs> as the first meeting to have both of you just standing there like, what, this guy? Is he cool? You know, just intimidate the heck out of him. Uh, but I explained to Glenn, this was the idea. And Glenn was like, 
I'm so glad that that's <laughs> not going to happen now because I would have been very scared. Very yeah. intimidated. That's the I, point. Because, <laughs> again, most of you guys, if you end up ever standing in between me and our friend William, that is not a place you want to stand because I'm 6'2". I think William is, what, 6'4"? Something like that. Yeah. yeah, he's really tall. He's he's really big. I'm really big. That is... That's not, that's not a place you want to be just to be. Like, if you're there, you're... You're, you're in trouble. Except for me, because they're my bodyguards. Yeah. <laughs> so only only a handful of people can stand there and get a pass. Because I think... Yay, I'm special. Was it? I think it was Sean. <laughs> uh-huh. Me and William ended up hugging him at the same time. Oh, the poor guy. <laughs> Sean... Was... Is Sean shorter than me? Sean is like... Or is he about the same height? Five, eight, five, nine? Yeah, so we're about the same height then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he did not have fun in that that instance. That oh was... no, <laughs> Sean! No, other character. It, uh, we met. I was grindstone. He was vice kill. So it was like all the same maze. I still want to do a game night with everyone from Tram that year that we made friends with. Like Epin, I told him so many times that we would hang out, and we haven't because I've been so busy. I feel bad. Ethan is so hard to to try down and keep get a hold of. He also works the apps now too. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Even so is also mean, another so, monster. He's nice. He's one of the nicest people you will ever meet in real life. So sweet, but he's so tall too, and that's where he gets the intimidation yeah. factor. Again, I don't like talking to people, and I have to do this. I don't like having to look up at people because you're not used to it. I'm not. Yeah. It, one of the reasons uh, Glenn liked Killer Clowns was because they were so big, and my boyfriend is six four, I believe, six three, six four. So he's pretty tall. And he says that he gets really intimidated and scared when things are taller than him because he's not used to it. So when the killer clowns were popping up above him, that's what got him. And things don't usually get him. Like, he, he likes horror like I do. So it was, it was funny to see him get scared. Sorry if you're watching this, Glenn. I love you. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, also don't know what it is. It's also more fulfilling to scare men than it is women. Because they put on such, like, a macho... Like, uh, girls do it, too. Don't get me wrong. But there's, like, a stigma that the guy has to be the brave one. You know? So the fact that I made a guy pee his pants as he fell back into his posse of four other full-grown men, that is one of my favorite stories to tell. <laughs> Have and you told me that story? Huh? Have you told me that story? Mm -hmm. I have not, but I made a TikTok about it. So, and like just a brief one. But basically, I was the wolf. And uh, as the wolf, because I was in this big scare zone, who am I, where am I supposed to hide? But it was also a crowded day, so I actually hid within the crowd. And the crowd would be like going one direction this way, one direction that way. And so I was hiding within the crowd going this way and popped out for the crowd going the other way so they didn't see me going and I'm a big wolf so when I pop out of nowhere that's scary <laughs> stuff so it was like a posse of full four full grown men I'd say like early late 20s early 30s probably and one of them fell back screaming into the other three or four I forgot exactly how many people there were but the other three guys and the way he walked away, I was like, there's no way you didn't just pee a little. There's no way you didn't just pee a little. Because he fell back, and he was like, I can't swear, but this is a swear. He's like, oh, shoot. Oh, no. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Ah, as he walked away. And I was like, there's, there's no way you didn't pee just a little bit. That check off the bucket list for scary i have made another person pee their pants once before and that was at a drop window in another haunt back up in near san francisco um she announced it very loudly and the way she walked away i knew it was true so someone definitely did <laughs> pee themselves a little bit um so i've done it at least twice from what i can remember maybe three times it's hard to keep the story straight. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so that is that is gonna be on my bucket list before I like full on retire because I'm I'm getting to the end of my scare career. Yeah, you yeah. think so? Are you gonna yeah. Are you gonna audition this year? I am. <gasps> Yay! Maybe we could audition together. But I'm also going off for show quality. Really? Yeah. I feel like that's the best of both worlds. I get to help teach 
some of you people who might want to come in and do this for a living. Yeah. And then I can also still do it for a little while. So show quality meaning like show control with the black robes? No. Or something, something else? You know Scout? Yes. Scout show quality. Ah, So okay. it would be like they're responsible for making sure the people in the maze are doing what they're supposed to do. So you're going to teach them scary and get out? Yes. That is important. <laughs> that is important, and I'm probably not the best person to teach that because I do <laughs> not follow that. I, I tend to linger. You teach them knowing that they should know this, but you you, you don't, don't do it yourself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I definitely yeah. have to do that because I've been, I've been punched so many times. I have not. I've only, I've only encountered one guest in the past seven years who hurt me, and that was this last season. Oh no! Yeah, what I, did they do? I scared them because you you remember how walking through the maze there was that door we popped out of. Uh, very you... last cupid. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I come out of that door. I scare him. He puts his hands up like this, and I guess he shoved his hand this way, went right into my eye. No. Yeah, he he felt really bad about it. I. At least he felt bad about it. At yeah, least he I, didn't try it on purpose. Because for some reason, that makes it a little better in my mind. Like, obviously, the pain is going to be the same, but my anger is going to subside just ever so slightly, knowing that it was an accident. Yeah. I'm sorry that happened to you. Hey. One one injury like that as a, in seven years, I'll take it. That's not bad. Mm. I think Sean got it worse. Why? He, what did he do? He got punched in the eye. <gasps> <laughs> he no, Sean. <got>, because <laughs> I think he was he was a ghillie. I don't know if you guys know what ghillies are. They're like they're bush people, pretty much. Really hard to see. Yeah, because they they are lined up with. Uh, a gilly wall. walling that yeah. is made of the same material so they could just blend in. And it works really well, especially when it's dark and foggy. Yeah. So well. It's a jump scare that you don't see coming even though they are literally right in front of you and that's the scariest part. Yep. They're not even trying to hide. They're just blending in. I'm kind of jealous. I've always wanted to do that. But... I want to move in the dark more. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Or Chainsaw. I wish they would put chainsaws in the tunnel. Mm, I do not want tunnel because of the lights. They toned it down this this last year, apparently. I know, but I still don't want to. <laughs> I have a story about that too because I've, I've I've by all means there. this is your time. Please share. <laughs> so this was the year before last year. So it was like 20, 2018. Mm. I was in the tunnel as a gopher person. Okay. And it was not a good time because they had these green strobes. Normally, the strobe lights don't bother me, but these green strobes, I don't know what it was doing to my eyes. It, mm. I had to st- I just had to stop moving and look down. That's, that's the only thing I could do. I, I just, I was a statue. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the, yeah I, I, I don't like the strobes. It, like, I could handle strobes, I'm sure, after a while, but it would just get old so fast. Oh, my God. That, like, the strobes. I got. give so much credit to the scarers in uh, the tunnel because the lights just constantly strobing. And I like the music, like the rave kind of music, but I'm sure that would get tired after a while, too, you know? Believe it or not, you rarely pay attention to it. Oh, okay. you, you go, you go deaf yeah. to the music. It's just noise. That's all you hear is noise. I, I can understand that because I did that too within my scare zone. I can hardly remember the music even that was playing with the scare zone. Um, but you just get so into it, and you're just like, I could see that. And also, depending on what you're doing, you're probably listening to your own music anyway. I don't do that. I have to wear earplugs. Really? Yeah, because my ears are kind of sensitive and I don't want to lose hearing, so I wear earplugs. Because if you're working in maze, I did this in my uh, scare acting tips and tricks, like health and safety video, if you want to watch that. But uh, I do touch base on wearing earplugs uh, because you are working in that l- really loud environment for hours at a time. If you're a guest, you're just going through for a few minutes, but if you're working it, you are in that constantly and it can damage your hearing. So we wear earplugs, or most of us wear earplugs. 
<laughs> to counteract that and, and deafen it so that it doesn't damage your hearing as much. But a lot of scare actors, you know, get bored on set. So they want to listen to their own music or like help get in the zone better and listen to their music. music. Your own music is a really good way to get pumped up. You get that little spike of adrenaline when you get that one song that comes on. It's like listening to music when you go to the gym. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's funny because one of our moments that I remember was when I was backstage listening to my own music because I was really antisocial when I was on my break. I'm like, I just want to drink water, Gatorade. I want to sit and listen to my music and be antisocial. We must have been on opposite sets because I don't let people do that. We were on opposite sets ah. because you were with my partner. Ah, yeah. and, But there was one time where I don't know if you came back from set early or what happened, but you were you came back where I was in my own lonely little corner there in my chair and I was just listening to music and we were just trying to get to know each other and you like take one of my earbuds saying, what are you listening to? And I was listening to Sucker for Pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that. And I was just yeah. like, oh, okay. So we listened to some of the same music. Okay, cool. We can be friends. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of like you were like, I was not expecting that from you. And I was like, what were you expecting? Like Katy Perry pop music? <laughs> uh, honestly, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, just, I'm not what I seem. <laughs> yeah. So I like a lot of different kinds of music. But yeah, I was listening to Sucker for Pain. I was like, yeah. Oh, grudge. Yeah. No, it's not really grudge. But like, I-, I felt grudge. Like, I wanted to get out there and get my face torn off again, you know? <laughs> oh, you no, no, no. Actually, I, I, I remember that day because that was before we started. That was before we started because you and Megan used to sit in the same area. Yeah, we sat next to each other because she was showing me around. It was my first year and she'd been doing it like, what, seven years at that point or something Ooh, like that. I like think, she she I, was doing it for a long time. So she was kind of my mentor at that point. And uh, yeah, I just I was just like following her around like a lost puppy. Like, where do I go? What do I do? What do I do on break? Like, what's going on? Even though I had scared before, I never worked that specific event. So I didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't know... Like, I had so much more freedom in the other haunts that I did. And I felt so bored being at Grindstone, to be honest. I loved it to a degree, but I was not the scare. So I wanted to be the scare. I felt almost insulted. Like, you put me in a distraction place? I've been scaring for years. I'm not a newbie, but I guess I had to pay my dues for that specific haunt. And I did, because I was immediately promoted, in a sense, to scare zone the next year. (laughs) They refused to put me in a scare zone, and I don't know why. Um, I think that just your your body type and your intimidation could be better served in a lot of mazes as specific characters. Because I can't really be a specific character, I guess. It depends. I'm, I'm, I'm good at switching up the character. See, I'm not all about intimidation. Yes, that is my go-to when I'm bored because it works. But no, I, I, can, I can be that fun, goofy person that, what are you doing? Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm just saying from their typecasting. Yeah. Because yeah, they they're... just look at you and go, they could go there. They don't really see what you've done over the years that to is, say, oh, they can do that. That is exactly why I ended up as Cupid this last year was literally because of my size. Like, Yeah. It is mainly about can they fit in the costume? Yes. Or if there's a specific character, do they look like this character? It's all about look. It's like... The first round of the audition is, can they scare? Can they follow the rules? Can they, do they have the endurance? You know, like, can they be a scarer? And then the next round of the casting process is, where can we put them based on their size, essentially? Because if you have the basics of scaring, you could do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we always recommend for people who want to come in, if you want to start, try to get into like the first group of auditions because it's so much easier as opposed to waiting until the end. By the end, they already know who they want for what. In the beginning, they're just like, okay, we can use this person. That's why most people who, when they start out and they wait till the end, they don't get it. I, I would strongly encourage, aim for the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's really good advice, actually. Because like at the beginning, they they have a certain number of people that they could put through to the next round of casting and at the beginning they're a little more frivolous with handing out those golden tickets because it's like oh they got the basic scaring it's fine like you said and then toward the end it's like well we only have like a few more we have to be more selective so that makes sense 
Yeah. Do you have any other advice for people who want to start scaring? Just work on your work on your endurance. Most <laughs> people think that the job is easy. Oh, you're just putting on a costume and you're running around. Most of that, yes, is true. But when you have to wear those silicone masks or or whatever kind of masks they are, it it it's tough to breathe. It's really hard to breathe. It's tough to breathe. So imagine running a marathon with no air. That is exactly what scare acting is. It's like you could practice it by breathing through a straw. Yep. And work on your breathing technique. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's why I said it's good to train a bit, too, especially if you know what kind of type you are. I'm usually the fast mover type. Um, I'm tall and intimidating, so I can slow down sometimes, but like I need the endurance because I'm going to be moving a lot, depending on where I'm cast. But mo- most often I've been moving a lot so i need to like start jogging build up cardio build up my stamina uh build up muscle so that my ankles aren't weak (laughs) because i've collapsed a couple times it was not fun i'm i'm lucky i've never had anything like that happen to me i think this well mine was more from previous injury because i was in a rock climbing accident and i twisted twisted my ankle many years ago and it's an ongoing pain and then it did not help when I, this is my fault. I got in the way of a stilt walker and they slammed down on my foot mm. and I tumbled down. Mm. So I, I just had never worked with stilt walkers before. It's really tough because I, I saw a potential scare and then I guess they were going for, I guess, the same scare and it was my fault. I, I need to watch it. You need to watch out for the stilt walkers. They're not. They can't see everything. Yeah, most of the time you can't see anything below your chest. For still walkers, they can't see anything down low. And they have to work through the crowd with those stilts. So I give them major props. Man, I I have seen those guys do some... Not just guys, because we have... We have girls. We have girls too. I kind of wanted to be a stilt walker, but you need a separate certification for that. uh, Universal trains. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say where. Well, no. well, you could say specifically Universal Trains, but other places might not. Mm. Maybe. All I know is, like, I have friends that work many different haunts, and a lot of them who are stilt walkers have said, like, maybe you should get certified, because you need to be trained to be a stilt walker for sure. You need, you need to practice how to fall as a stilt walker specifically, because it does happen, Ooh. and you're falling at a great height, And in the moment, you may not think to do it, so you have to make it muscle memory. So you have to, like, train how to fall so that it just, as it's happening, you go down properly. Because one of the the girls we worked with this last season, I really wish they would stop texting me. Uh, One of the girls (laughs) we worked with this last season, she ended up going down because, you know, our maids had still walkers inside. Yeah. And she went down, and that was... that. Sorry, I That's tried okay. to ignore this, but I don't see what she wants. I know what it is. No worries. This will be a good chance for me to check the chat, actually. Let me just awkwardly move <laughs> the camera. Ah, okay. Um, love your character stories. Thank you. I'm trying to see if you guys have any questions. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hello, hello. Thank you for the follow, everybody who's followed. Love your hair color. Thanks, it's a wig. Uh, we can't have headphones on my haunt. Uh, their earbuds so that they can hide it. Um, ears for ear, I won't hear them coming. Yep. Uh, dense strobe lights and fog in a tiny room. That's rough. Uh, punch someone and don't go through scary things I don't want to hit. Okay. Yeah, if you know that you're the type to hit when you're scared, best to not go through the haunt at all. Yeah. Got elbowed in the face in a jump window. That sucks. <laughs> um, happy birthday, Olivia Smith! It's my golden birthday tomorrow. What's golden birthday? Do you know what golden I birthday is? Do. I don't know what that means, but happy birthday! Uh, hello, hello, hello. Does anyone have any questions for my guest before we call it? Do, 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 do. Hello, hello. Sorry, I haven't been uh, checking in on the chat so much. I can't see. Um, do, do, do. You know, what's with all middle fingers? <laughs> <laughs> Middle finger emojis. 
uh, seven new messages. Where do you get your costumes? I love your contacts. These are not contacts. <laughs> uh, unless you're referring to like what I wore in other videos, then thanks. I got them at uniqueso.com. Code ScareActor for a discount. Plug. Um, golden birthday is when you reach the age of the lands. Oh, reach the age your birthday lands on. Yes. Okay. So like I was born on the 13th of a month. So my golden birthday was when I turned 13. Oh. That kind of thing. That makes sense. Okay, and that happened when I was seven. Um, okay. So that seems to... Who texted me? Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, how do you go live? I can explain that. Uh, let me just awkwardly walk in front of the camera. Shimmy, shimmy, shake. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Awkward. Okay, so um, we don't get our costumes when we scare. Like, they're not our costumes. They're assigned to us. You have to get them every day from Scarebase. Mm-hmm. So you, you go to where costumes is. They give you your costume for the day. Oh, no, they changed it since you've been there. Now they give you these nifty little cards and you take it to the costume table. So when you sign in for the day, they give you this card that- it, At this it, specific haunt, other haunts may do it differently. Yeah. So we're just talking about this specific haunt. So continue. So they give you this card that has all of what you're gonna need for your costume pieces. You take it over to the costume table and they scan it one at a time. And then they go retrieve your hanger. Now, you still have to double check that all of your costume pieces are still there. Because sometimes and that they're, they're yours. And that they're yours. You always yeah. have to check your character number. Um, and then you have to initial still? or No. No, they just check it out when they scan it. Oh. Now, it sounds like it's gonna, it would save time. No, it doesn't. But technology sucks. It just feels like the same, but different. It's like it would take the same amount of time... It used to be that you're assigned a number, like I'm I'm scare actor number sixteen, I'm scare actor number one thirty seven or something like that, and then that's how they organize their costumes. Like, oh, these are all the pieces for one thirty seven. We put one thirty seven in each costume piece so that we know where to put them after we clean them. And then when one thirty seven shows us their number, we grab it uh, from this organization whatever system they have bring the costume, the scare actor then checks to make sure that each costume piece is there, that they are assigned, and that there are no extra pieces that are supposed to go to someone else by accident, because people are human, you know, they put things where they shouldn't sometimes, and that's fine. Um, then we were supposed to initial a piece of paper confirming, yes, I have received everything that I am assigned, these are the specific pieces that I am assigned, and if you did not receive it, you did not initial because you are responsible to bring those costume pieces back. And if you didn't bring a piece back, then they kept your ID. ID. They don't even take your ID anymore. Okay. So where's the incentive to not steal stuff? Because <laughs> <Right. like, laughs> a lot of people might steal costume pieces, I, I guess. Um, so the incentive to not steal it was that you give the costumes people your government issued ID and they kept it safe in a, in a file so that when you brought back all the pieces, they would then give you your ID back and you need that ID. <laughs> so you're going to want to give back every piece of clothing again. That's weird. That's a weird new Man, system. It's, it's a weird system and I didn't like it. I did not like it. It, it, it just was not a good time. Nope. No. Not only that, but when you brought the costume pieces back, it wasn't just like, here's all my stuff. I'm signing everything back in. You had to sit there and wait for them to scan everything one item at a time. Most of these costumes are like seven different pieces. If you have a really small costume, you'll have five different pieces. Those are the, the easy costumes. Yeah. But there have been costumes that... How many pieces did your werewolf costume have? Uh, that I had to check out. So it was... My ninja hood, which is something that you use to cover your head when you wear a mask so that you could protect your head from the mask and make it easier to wear. 
Um, also to keep it more sanitary, I guess. I don't know. Um, undershirt. Did I wear an undershirt? I can't remember. I think I did. I don't remember. So undershirt uh, un and pants to wear underneath. Um, I can't remember, actually. I can't remember my costume. I think I'm mixing it with the grindstone kill. So it was my uh, shorts. I wore shorts. That's what it was. I wore shorts. I wore an undershirt. I wore a leotard. I wore a dress. I wore boots and uh, the hood. And that was all. This, uh, that's all the stuff I had to check out. Yeah. Yeah. So six. I had six pieces. And it was a pretty fairly simple costume yeah. too. Yeah, those are those are the simple ones. And then I had to check out my mask and gloves when I got down to my maze. I will say I'm happy that they started checking out the mask and stuff like that at the maze. So you'll you'll essentially get your mask at a different time than you would your costume. You'll get your mask when you get to whatever maze you're assigned to. Um, I don't know but how you, scare zones do it. How do, we have oh, it. You, we you have different have sections. Thing? Yeah, it's like they bring the masks to us. Ask us. <laughs> Been talking a while. Um, yeah, they bring. They had like a rack full of masks, and yeah, they would so put they, it they in our in our uh, break area. Things. Yeah. All right. So they did you guys the same way they did us. And then same with the the gloves. Uh, just they had it in a like a basket, and we had to find them. And they had the numbers on the inside, so you knew whose was whose. That just seems like. It's a different department. It's a different department of people who work with the masks and the gloves and those specialty things. Uh, and makeup is like also kind of separate too. No, I think but I the think, same. Uh, it's like different, but the same. Once again, it's like I, we were assigned a few people who were specifically in charge of the masks, but they could also do makeup, but they weren't assigned to do makeup. makeup. But I think I think McGee Effects does all the mask and makeup. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I know for sure the masks. Because they put my costume up on their Instagram. And I was like, that's me, but not me. <laughs> uh, and then for makeup, it depends on how long you're going to be in the chair. Because a lot of people had... I know for the Freddies that one year, they had to get makeup on their hand. Yeah. The one hand, because the other one had the glove. Uh, and that took a while, because they had to make it look like... A burn victim uh, Hello. but Hi. they but they <laughs> when you wear a mask you only essentially get makeup around your eyes and that's one of the pros of wearing a full head mask because i was just it was a breeze to get my costume i don't know if you noticed but i would check out my costume i wouldn't even get changed yet because i was there so early my call time was like five o'clock didn't have to be on set until like seven for the the ceremony, the first show that I was in. Uh, so I had two full hours. So I grabbed my costume. That took like fifteen minutes because I always got there early because I'm smart like that. I didn't have to be in a makeup chair. They they put the stuff on my eyes right before I put my mask on. So I just went to my break area, dropped off my costume, ate for an hour, got paid for it. <laughs> Uh, went back, changed in my costume, stretched a bit, all within the second hour, went downstairs, uh, and then put my hair up and my ninja hood on and had them put the red around my eyes and mask on, do the show. See, <laughs> it was, where... I was spoiled. It is not usually like, I was spoiled. Like, people were in those makeup chairs for hours, like Sky was in the chair for so long because she had the prosthetics. I, ooh, I had to do that once. I am not envious of that. I hate, mm -hmm. I hate prosthetics. And then they had like their special teeth too. Oof. Because she had the prosthetics because she was a half transformed wolf. So she didn't have the full head mask. She had just prosthetics to make her look like the in-between stage between human and werewolf. So she had uh, prosthetics for the brow and the nose, I believe. Um, and then teeth that were made for her so she had like dentures made and then the ears and she always had problems with the ear i i can imagine that the poor <sighs> thing it was like so painful for have, her you, have you ever had to wear prosthetics doing that yes but not for that haunt uh, i've i've worn prosthetics before for other things like i was a zombie in a film once and i had to wear prosthetics for that and special contacts and stuff that was fun because i had my own contacts in to be able to see because i was legally blind um fun fact i've gotten laser sh eye surgery since but it was back when i first started acting and one of my first gigs was to be a zombie in a student film 
And so they paid for this person to put on all these prosthetics on me and put makeup on me. And it looks pretty dope, actually. And then they had special contacts for me to wear. They were like, will this be a problem? And I said, putting them in won't be a problem because I wear contacts every day and I'm very good at wearing contacts. That's not an issue. However, I will need someone as a handler to guide me to set because I can't see at all. So someone had to like hold my hand and guide me and say, there's a big log right here because we were outside. There's a big log right here. Step over it. Okay, good. We're going to go over here. Watch that stick there. Like watch that there. All right. And now you're going to lay face down here. We're going to attach this to your like bear trap thing to your ankle here. And you're going to be a zombie trapped. Here's some meat raw meat that you're gonna be grabbing for and i said that's not sanitary and they were like and you're gonna pretend to eat it i'm like can i just pretend that it is just out of reach and not touch the raw meat but i had to touch the raw meat don't do that that's dangerous but i i was like i had the specialty contacts and i couldn't see at all so um that's when i had prosthetics on and it was fine it just took forever to put on and take off the one time i had to wear prosthetics they they, it was relatively quick it was mainly across the brow Mm -hmm. what i didn't like is the fact that the sweat had nowhere to go and you could just feel it pool right on your forehead it was not fun Uh yeah i've never scared in prosthetics so i would imagine that that would be a big problem that was the most uncomfortable night Mm. Of scaring. And I have scared in some pretty uncomfortable stuff. That, top of the list, would not do again. So, we're going to wrap it up here shortly. Uh, I have two more questions. Hi, construction. (laughs) Uh, So, we mentioned earlier a scare actor bucket list. What is on your scare actor bucket list. And what have you done and what do you still need to do? So we touched base on, uh, you have checked off someone spill their beer, but you have not checked off have someone pee their pants. Not checked off on have someone pee their pants. Um, <laughs> oh, that's the only thing left on, on my bucket list to do. But what else is on your bucket list? Let's see, knock someone over. Uh-huh. This one, this next one is kind of mean, but scary child. It's kind of mean, <laughs> but it's super funny. Most, most, like, if you guys ever try it, you'll understand what I mean. It's super easy too. So I don't it's think easy, really and count. the reactions are usually very exaggerated. So yeah. I can see why. Yeah. Just utterly confuse someone. Okay. Like that one. That one was hilarious because they had no idea what I was doing, and then I just walked away and they, they stopped and they were just sitting there just like what what just happened <laughs> what is life what, uh. what is life <laughs> um i really confused someone i would say chainsaw but i did that at the haunt in santa clarita ah so that one fun yeah also not not stilts i don't want to do stilts i don't blame you like that's one where i'm like I kind of want to just to say I've done it, but I don't really want to do it. I don't think I'd be good at it, if I'm honest. It's not so much that I don't think I'd be good at it. I just, I, I would be too afraid to step on people. If you get them. Because I can be clumsy at times. I don't want to be clumsy higher up than I already am. At, at times? At times? Just at times? At a great moment at times. <laughs> A majority of times. <laughs> uh, did I tell you about the first time I went through The Walking Dead at Universal with Glenn? No. This was our first date at Universal. This was... He met Abe before oh. we were, like... Before we announced that we were officially together, we, like, became officially together, and then the, literally the next day we were going to Universal anyway. So uh, we went to Universal, and uh, we were going through Walking Dead. Rest in peace, Walking Dead. <laughs> Uh, it's no longer around, but it was fun. It'll probably be back. I had a lot of, like, fellow scare actor friends who worked as zombies in that maze. And, uh, do you know Stanley? I don't know if you would know Stanley. I don't think I know Stanley. Okay, well, he's one of my friends. Hi, Stanley, if you're watching this. You're probably not, but hi if you are. Um, 
So Stanley was one of those people. This doesn't have to do with the scare that happened, but he was one of those people that I ran into because he like slammed the glass. At, he was like the tail end scare. Mm. He slammed the glass at me and I was scared. And then he slammed it on the side the second time and like waved to me. And I was very confused. Like, <laughs> you know me, but I don't know you. And I kind of waved back. And he messaged me later saying, like, you didn't say hi, it was me. And I'm like, I didn't know it was you. You were wearing a mask. Like, how am I supposed to know these things? I can't tell who you are. This is, why, this is why you talk to fellow scare actors and say, if I go through as a guest and you are dressed up and I can't tell it's you, but you can tell it's me, we need to have some sort of signal to each other to let me know that it is you so I could say, oh, hi, it's my friend. Anyway, so the scare happened. This was a legitimate scare. It's so much fun to scare me because this is how I react. This is a legitimate reaction I had. Um, we were going through The Walking Dead and I wasn't expecting to be legitimately scared because I've gone through quite a few times so I knew what to expect, except for this one time. We were going through that room with the stairs and I haven't seen the show. The uh, prison? I don't know if it was prison but it was like there are these stairs and then there's a door underneath the stairs that, was that the prison. okay so a zombie comes out from the the door under there and then there's someone up above i haven't seen the show so i don't know the names but someone shooting at the zombie saying go go get out get out and so we were going around there and i knew to expect that zombie from under the stairs i did not know there was another door to the right <laughs> that a zombie would come through so we were going through and just got this boyfriend. I'm very embarrassed at this point. But zombie comes through the door on the right and I go, ah, I was not expecting you. And I had my back against the wall. <laughs> and then there's, uh, oh, no, 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 that, that zombie comes out. And I was like, I wasn't expecting you. I start to run through. The other zombie comes out of the door that I was expecting. I go, I was expecting you. And I like go back against the wall and I start sinking down like, ah. <laughs> And I had to explain to Glenn, like, this is a legitimate reaction. I know it was really over the top, but I do that sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's what it's like to scare me. I'm just so over the top, and I don't mean to be, but that's just my personality. That's why whenever I know I have a friend who I can scare, if I know they're coming through, I'm always going to go for it. Always. Always. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, what was the second thing? Oh, I just wanted to ask, like, are there any other fun scare actor stories, like scare stories, before we we call it? Fun scare stories. Or just any scare stories that you you remember, like what sticks out in your mind. So much. I know it's hard so to it's, it's hard, hard to, to narrow it, like, yeah. Pick a story. Um I know if anybody knows me who's watching this, there are they already know it's gonna be a tram story because that that was like <laughs> the only thing I would talk about this last season. Uh -huh. Just tram, 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 tram. Guys, Terror Tram was a great place to work. If you if you went through as a guest, it was it was meh. Great place to work. It, it was, was like it work. was like yeah. family there. Um. This last season was was pretty cool because I actually got to work with another victim. Okay. Most of you guys probably don't know that's actually exceedingly rare in haunts to have another person you're working with. I actually got to work with two different people. Um, one girl, love her to death as a person. Mm -hmm. She just wasn't giving me any feedback. Oh, no, that's the worst. That's the worst thing ever. Like, it's so easy to... If you already know that they're kind of a jerk and they're not good at acting, then it's so easy to talk bad about them. But if you actually like them <laughs> as she, a person... As a person, she's great. No! But, yeah. But the other girl... Oh, my God. That that was... We only got to work together one time and we had been pushing for it all season. Uh-huh. Phenomenal. <gasps> Phenomenal. Like, I would do things and she would play off of me. Mm -hmm. And then she would do things. We would just go back and forth. This is why improv end. is important and scaring. Improv is so important, especially if you're working with somebody as a partner. You have to be able to communicate with that person without talking. Mm -hmm. Like, you just have to keep doing things until they realize what you're doing. 
it's a, it's a, it's so much harder, especially if you're working with somebody who is. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what is happening. We're not changing it. You have to be flexible and be able to adapt. Mm-hmm. Just have fun. You just have fun. Yeah. You know, there is no wrong answer unless you're not doing anything. Unless you're not doing anything, you're not staying in character, and you are legitimately breaking the rules, like you're touching guests and stuff to get you in trouble. Yeah, no, if you are if you are working with somebody like me and you are doing something that just you know won't fly, because if, if any of the people who are running the event walk through, and they do walk through a lot, see That's that. That's their job. That yeah. you're, you're done. Um, people, if you're working with somebody like me, I'll let it go that first step. I'll pull you off and be like, hey, so you did this, 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 and this. We can't do that. Let's try doing this, 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 and this instead and see where we go. Like, I'm not going to be like a know-it-all. I'm just going to be like, look, if... I'm not trying to get fired. I'm here, really yeah. not trying to get fired <laughs> yeah. because I I love these events and I want to keep doing them as long as I can. Mm-hmm. Please don't get me fired. Mm-hmm. But most people they'll they'll understand. You know, hey, I kind of kind of screwed up here. Yeah. We'll try we'll try to avoid that happening again. What I don't get is essentially rewarding someone for breaking the rules. Because do you remember that on tram? I don't want to say the person's name, but uh, there was someone who kept complaining about the part that they had on tram saying it was boring, they weren't really into it, they didn't want to do it, they wanted to be in this other maze in this other part instead. And so the guy would be on his set while on his oh, phone. Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. You know, okay, yeah, because he was like... Oh, because he, we were just like, dude, you would... They caught it on video. It's on video somewhere online. He should online. have been fired. Like, to, yeah, oh my god, online, really? I didn't yes, know that. it's online oh. somewhere. Like, people who were walking through, and he's just sitting there scrolling on his phone. I'm just like, dude. And just so you know, this guy was supposed to have his back being snapped in half. Yeah, then and he's guys, just like, la di da di da di da <laughs> Yes. I don't, I don't like to, like, talk bad about people, but this guy should have been fired, uh, unfortunately. Like, we had a lot of good conversations, so I didn't want to, like, dislike him or anything like that or talk bad about him. But from a professional standpoint, he should not have been doing that. And uh, he should have been fired, but instead he was just moved to the maze he wanted to work at I, in the role he wanted. Why would you essentially reward him for that? I don't get that. I, I don't get that either. That's my only really comp- my only. Honestly, I don't even know if he came back. I think I think uh, it was just that one year. I think. Yeah, he, yeah. he was only there that one year, and I don't think he came back uh, the year after that. But, yeah. Mm. You there? There are people, you don't want to upset the people you work with. You, you you want to try to make it as much of a family as possible because we work together. We're close knit. Yeah. Like there are people I'm friends with on Facebook that I've never worked with, but I like I'm familiar with their scare technique and stuff. Like because you just everyone knows everyone in, in that family. Yeah. You know, and like there are people that I didn't work with necessarily, but will have get-togethers every once in a while for all the scares in this particular haunt that we work at and grab a beer. Unfortunately, that place is no longer open, uh, so we need to find a new place. You know what I'm yeah. talking about. Um, so, I'll, like, get a little drunk, meet my fellow scarers. Like, oh, where did you work last year? Oh, no way, that was you? Oh, you had this great scare that I saw. What about me? Oh, thanks. You know, and just, like, go back and forth, and that's great. I, I love working with other people like that. I love how creative people can be and I learned so much from them. And to see, I think one of my biggest pieces of advice I could give if you're starting acting is uh, figure out what you're good at and lean into that rather than trying to be something you think you should be. Lean into what you already have. Because with me, I'm not going to be big and intimidating. I'm not a big and intimidating person. Yeah, because the things that I do would would not work for you. Exactly. So I can't I can't watch you and go, oh, I can do that. But I can look at other fellow scarers and be like, okay, yeah, I can work that. Oh, that's a great idea, and just get really creative. Yeah. Um, like I have a friend who is 
who had never scared before, but wanted to try for Halloween Horror Nights because, uh, like, I have told him, like, I have a lot of friends that work this event. It's near you. It's some extra cash. Uh, I think it would be a good experience for you because you are a big fan of, like, Universal's movies and stuff. And he just wanted to try it out. And he ended up loving it. He loved the audition process. I, like, trained him a little bit as far as, like, scaring. And at the beginning, when I started, like, training him, so to speak, he he thought like just standing and looming because he's a tall skinny guy so he thought just like standing and and looking scary would be enough and i said that would be great for certain haunts but for this particular one they want to see you moving so i would recommend like even just slow movement would help with that kind of character so he knew kind of what kind of character he wanted to be and we just kind of worked with that. It's like, this is what you've got. This is what you have to work with. This is what I recommend for you. So just work with what you've got. For some reason, that's one of the best combinations, big and slow moving. It, it works wonders when you're in a scare zone. Yes, I learned that when I was the wolf, actually. And I have worked scare zones before, but I was never a big wolf before. I was usually so, like a... a axe-wielding murder of sorts, so I would just, like, laugh maniacally and run around and be kind of, like, crazy clown character, and that was always fun, but to be an intimidating character as a wolf, I had to learn the hard way, like, I started off scaring, running around like crazy and just, like, you know, and all those movements, but that was exhausting as hell, and I couldn't keep that up, and the, one of the reasons I did that was because so many people wanted to touch me, because of my fur. And the fact that I was supposed to be big and intimidating, they thought that they could get away with touching me and be like, oh, you're not that scary. Uh, so instead, I switched it up to slow movement and switch it up every once in a while. And that ended up being like a fake jump scare of sorts in a big open area. Just move, just yeah, changing up your movement like that. Because one of the things I know about scare zones is people will sit and they will watch you for hours. And if you're if you're big and slow moving, okay, that's great, but it gets boring. But if you if you switch that gear, it's like okay, you're going from big and slow moving to zipping all over the place. Like people like me, fairly big guy. When I get to moving around, people don't really know what's going on because I'm. I'm pretty agile. Mm-hmm. It is how do I how do I, how do I put it? It's, it's it's one of those things that's just amazing to see. Yeah, yeah. Because like I think William is pretty pretty agile too. He can he can he move. Is. He can move. He is surprisingly good too. agile, not in a bad way, but it's like you wouldn't expect it, and that's exactly why it works. Yeah. Do you have any more advice to someone who just wants to get started in scare acting? You said endurance, stamina before. Don't be nervous. Like when you first when you first get out there, when you first go through the audition process, you're gonna have butterflies the size of eagles. You're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna feel n- like almost nauseous. Nobody's gonna judge you. Like everybody is there for the exact same reason. You know, yes, the audition process, you're worried about making that cut. But if you go in, you because they're they're always going to be looking for energy and movement, Mm -hmm. you know, be loud without speaking. That's what they're looking for. If you can do that, you're fine. When you go out the first couple of sets you, you do, even if you when you've been doing as long as we have. Those first sets are going to be like, you're really learning the character. That's why if you guys ever go through a haunt, that first, what, week and a half kind of sucks. Yeah, because everyone's learning their character and learning their space and learning what they can and cannot do. And also costumes. They're getting used to the costumes and uh, fixing any issues with costumes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, they're just trying it out that first week. Yeah, it's, there, there's a warm up period. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. You know, just, just don't be nervous. Go out, have a good time, and always be mindful when somebody is trying to give you pointers. They're never doing it from, uh, I'm better than you. I've been doing this longer than you. I know what I'm talking about. I know it works. It's always, hey, I see you're you're struggling with this. This I went through something similar. Try this out. See how it works for you. If it works, great. Go ahead and use it. 
have a blast. If it doesn't work, kind of tweak it so that it could work or or use this as a source to come up with something that can work. I had I worked with a guy named Olin this last season. Okay. Olin, don't know if you're watching. Probably not watching. If you are, what's up? Um, <laughs> fantastic guy. Great guy to work with. Um, <clears throat> he he was also a Cupid. Okay. So, you know, I was, I was able to, you know, coach him because he was also a big guy. All the Cubans Was it this his year, first year? This was his first year. This gotcha. was his first year ever, I think, scaring. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he's always been a huge fan of the event. Um, but no, it was his first year. And, you know, throughout the entire season, he was, he was always worried that he wasn't doing a great job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, we, most of the time we'll be on set at the same time, but when we weren't, I would go through, check his performance. You know, he was doing a good, a g- amazing job. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, so just don't second guess yourself. If you're doing something that you're not sure about, ask somebody. Somebody will always be there to point you in the right direction. Fun side note, yeah. he ended up getting rookie of the year this last season. Yeah. Yay, congratulations so see, don't, if he's watching. Don't second guess yourself always always be sure of what you're doing if you're doing something wrong somebody will let you know mm-hmm. absolutely who is calling me right now uh i don't know that number i'm gonna ignore that number yeah i have that same problem too yeah yeah it, it could go to voicemail <laughs> I, i'm not a social person that's why i hide behind a mask and scares I'm also not a, a social person, but during that event, I don't like when people sit in their corners by themselves. They Listening just... to music, like, <laughs> sorry for me. <pain. laughs> oh, that's why I feel for Angel, because she ends up working with me every year, and she always <laughs> tries to take a nap, and I always walk by, hey, wake up. <laughs> no, no sleep, wake up. Oh, my God. I love her to death. She's, she's great. She's she's actually one of my workout buddies right now. Oh really? That's yeah. great. So yeah, you end yeah. up getting really close with your fellow scares. Like they're they're such great people, and especially like everyone is on this adrenaline high. Everyone's super excited to get out and scare and help one another. Like it's a weirdly nice environment, and also some of the most intimidating looking people might be the sweetest things you have ever met, like Ethan and Lumberjack. Oh my God, Lumberjack. <laughs> I bet he doesn't even know who I am, but he was a legend where we are. Lumber, Lumber, Lumberjack is, if you ever decide to work at this haunt, you will hear that name. A lot of people were actually worried about him this year because he didn't show up to auditions. Really? Yeah, he did not. He did not oh. perform this year. And every, the whole season, everybody's like, where's Lumberjack? So... Uh, he is he is one of those names you will hear even if you never meet him. And if you meet him, you will know the beard gives him away every time. Yep. <laughs> he's he's known for his beard. Yeah. That beard. What was he this year? He he didn't perform this year. Oh that's right, you didn't he did not. No, audition. but his last year he was Cupid. That's what I remember that. Yes, yes. I was like, he was Cupid, right? Yes, he was Cupid. Yeah. I remember because I think I had orientation with him and he when when he found out that he was keeping it like, yeah, I'm doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. And see that. So I was just like, mm. they told me I was cute, but I was just like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want this. I don't want, I don't want, want this. Jason. Was there, was there a maze with Jason this year? Nope. I don't think so. Yeah. Otherwise there, he would have been. There yeah. will never be another Jason Voorhees at that event again. Why? Warner Brothers. Uh, they, they took back there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff with Hans Gurr. Yep. yep, they they took back their IP. So Oh no. Yep, because you know they were they were doing uh what was it Fear Made Here? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was twenty twenty eighteen. They did one twenty eighteen. They didn't do one last year. And I don't know if they're doing one again this year. But remember, they had their own Freddy vs. Jason in 2018. I did not know that. But really? okay. Wow. Yeah, no, I I am a hermit. I don't go out. I don't know things. Yeah, there, there That's is... That's why I'm on the internet. <laughs> yeah, there is a <laughs> lot of information that goes around behind the scenes that most people 
probably don't know about, but yeah, I, I always say try it out, get a look behind the curtain. It'll it'll change your life. Any other closing statements? We chatted for a long time, huh? We, we, did. <laughs> we did. This was awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Anytime. Yeah. I might have you on again. I obviously, we're going to make that YouTube video shortly after this. Um, maybe grab a snack. I got to feed my cats. But we're going to make the <laughs> YouTube video about uh, playing intimidating characters given different genders, different body types. Um, so if you're like a big guy... I can't answer that because I am not a big guy, but I got a big guy here who plays big guy pots. So uh, we'll we'll go over that in the next YouTube scare actor tips and tricks. No, I also want to play a small guy part, but they won't let me. Yeah, they they typecast. Unfortunately, it's I purely based on looks. Wanted to be an elf. But they were just like no. that. Would have been fun. That would have <laughs> been the greatest thing ever because that would have confused so many people. Yeah. Right. I wanted to be a tall Sam. No. <laughs> yeah. The giant Sam. <laughs> Just like the giant Sam with a lollipop like <laughs> looming over. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you so much for coming, Chris. Uh, once again, this is Chris Hicks. He's an amazing scare actor. He does a lot of different haunts. Uh, you might see him again. We're really good friends. So uh, thank you for being my first guest ever for this kind of interview. I feel special. You are special. I really liked working with you, and I mean, it, it's fitting that you are my first person to interview because you were one of the first people I worked with and became friends with, so I think it's only fair that I interview you first. And I think you brought a lot to the table. I think you uh, gave people a lot to think about in case they want to become a scare actor. You shared some fun stories. So, yeah. Let me know uh, if you liked this interview. Please do like this video and leave a comment below if you want to see more interviews. They'll be coming anyway, because I just really like talking with my friends. I hope you enjoy listening to what we have to talk about, about scare acting. And if you are interested in scare acting, do look up haunts in your area. They're typically seasonal, but there are year-round places that, that you can around. scare at. Uh, like escape rooms, for example, might have like escape from a zombie or something. So you never know. Do some research in your area and uh, do follow the law. And... Um, if you're not old enough to work, then you probably aren't old enough to scare. But once again, it depends where you are from. So. And even if you're not old enough to scare, just 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 wait, because uh, we yeah. have an honorary scarer already that comes through our haunt all Every the time. Year, and she is special. She, we we have a chainsaw ready to go for her when she is old enough to scare. Yep. Because she is honorary scarer, so you never know. And it's always good to go through the haunts and understand what kind of characters they have there, what kind of sets they have there. Uh, if you are not old enough to scare for when you are old enough to scare, you know exactly what they're looking for and you know what to deliver for them. So, yeah. With me, I just did it and was lucky enough to get in. See, that, that's how I was with the, with my first my first year ever. I was just like, this seems like it'll be fun. Let's go do it. And I did it. And I did that for three years. And then... I think that's a lot of people that scare too. It's just yeah. like, yeah, this looks like fun. And a lot of people don't know about scare acting. So this is one of the reasons why I want to do this for my YouTube channel. Because I've gotten a lot of comments from fellow scarers, people I haven't worked with or met in real life, but they are scare actors. And they comment on my videos and my TikToks saying, thank you for sharing this information. Because when I started scaring, this information wasn't out there for me and I wish it were so thank you for this so this is why I'm doing this I hope it helps you I think it's time to call it but once again thank you so much for coming Chris thank you guys for watching this video if you watched it all the way through thank you very much please like and leave a comment down below if you're not subscribed to my channel and you're interested in more scare actor content please subscribe to my channel I also cosplay so if you're interested in cosplay stuff also subscribe there uh, if you don't follow me on TikTok yet that's my main audience, so follow at Charge and Die. And I'm also on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, so I'm easy to find. All right, guys, have a good one. All right, bye.